I've been giving a lot of attention recently to the traditional grip. And that's mainly just because, you know, I'm still just sort of settling into it and, you know, learning how to, still learning how to use it. So I use it a lot in the recent videos and I gig with it a lot and stuff like that. But make no mistake, man, I still love the match grip. You know, I spent the last 25, 30 years, you know, working on my match grip and developing it. And, and I got to be honest, man. It's actually pretty good. Yeah, I've I've settled into a to a to a grip now that I've been using for the last several years, and um, it's just a really super comfortable grip for me, and it's my comfort zone, you know. So I mean, whenever I'm, I'm in a situation where I'm not 100% confident, maybe using traditional, I'll revert back to match, and then all the pressure's off, and I know everything's going to be awesome. I also realized that. Uh, I don't really have any instruction on the match grip. So, and I know there's, there's still a lot of you guys out there. There's probably way more viewers out there checking out this channel using the match grip than traditional. So, you know, I want to give you guys some love too. So, I just thought it'd be a cool idea to, um, to put together a little video. And this is not so much intended to be a how-to type of thing because um, there's, a, there's a lot of different ways that you can play the match grip. So I'm not going to try to sell you on one way to do it. This is more or less just sort of sharing with you guys um, the changes that I've made over the last several years and um, just kind of let you in on the, the grip that I'm using now. And, um, you know, maybe give you some tips you know, if, you, if you want to make some changes to your grip or if it needs improving or, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do. This video is all about the match grip. And, um, and I also included some self-analysis because sometimes with detailed topics like this, it's hard to be accurate 100% of the time. So um, instead of saying, yeah, you know, I think I just kind of do it this way and kind of do it that way. I just recorded myself playing and, um, and just tried to put a close-up on the hands so you guys could see what's going on with the hands. And the cool thing that I found is that uh, yeah, I've discovered a couple of uh, cool things, some, some, some interesting observations that I've made while I was playing because I don't really think about it. I'm on autopilot, right, when I'm playing. So it was a cool sort of way for me to take a look at my own playing. So I'll share some of that footage and, you know, just give you an idea of what my hands look like when I'm playing in any regular type situation. So I'm going to start on the practice pad, show you a couple of things that I'm doing, and then we'll take a look at some of the footage, get you some close up on the hands and uh, maybe give you some ideas of any changes you might want to make to your playing and Whatever else, whatever will help you out. All right, so if you're ready to go, you got yourself a tall drink, a pair of sticks, and a practice pad. Let's, uh, let's get into this whole match grip thing. Now, um, as you may know, or if you're a new drummer and you may not know, match grip just kind of refers to um, the way the hands look while you're holding the sticks. It's called matched because your hands look relatively the same while you're holding the sticks. They're, they're pretty much even. But it's kind of sort of a blanket term because there's a few different types of match grip. You have the French grip. French grip is basically your palms are just kind of facing each other. Thumbs are over top and it's this kind of thing. There's the German grip, which is like this. You know, palms down kind of thing. Um, and then there's the American grip. The American grip is sort of a nice, comfortable, sort of happy medium between the two of them. So it's kind of a cross between both. Like your palms are not completely face down. They're not completely facing each other. Um, they're just sort of on a comfortable angle. So let's, um, let's take a look at 
the right hand or the left hand if you're left-handed. And I just want to talk a little bit about the mechanics of the match grip, or at least how I'm doing it now. Now for a long time, I kind of played like this. I got uh, all four fingers are kind of touching the stick. My thumb was uh, fairly kind of over top, over the top of the stick like that. And the fulcrum, let's talk about the fulcrum. The fulcrum, when you're holding the stick, um, there's, there's where you decide to hold it on your hands, and there's also, on the stick itself, there's a balance point. This is a perfect sort of balance point where you'll get the most rebound from the stick. Now for a long time, when I uh, first started playing, and for several years following, my fulcrum, I was using the index finger for my fulcrum, so it was basically like that. So this is where I was getting all my bounce from, um, with the thumb and the index finger, and I was just kind of doing that kind of thing. Um, a few years ago, I don't know, eight, ten, whatever years ago, I switched it. I switched it to my middle finger. And that little change alone changed my grip entirely. All of a sudden, things just got a lot more comfortable for me, personally, anyways. Now, I'm not 100% sure if it's my body that adapted to the grip or if it's the grip that adapted to how I play. But the marriage, regardless of how it happened, the marriage is perfect. Because if you'll observe how I'm playing, you know, my elbows are just kind of tucked in. You know, they don't really flare out too much. And I use a lot of wrist while I'm playing. Settling into this sort of American grip-ish kind of hybrid kind of thing that I'm doing, um, that is the best possible grip for how I play. Because I can stay relaxed. Everything happens from right here. You know, my elbows don't have to move, my arms don't have to move too much. And I can work my wrists right from this position. And if you see where sort of my hands are naturally right here, um, how to sort of on that kind of angle, that is exactly the angle that the hands are when you're using the American grip. So that, coupled with my new fulcrum right here, and again, index fingers are just resting on the side of the stick like they're really not doing too much anymore. It just really allows me to just kind of flop my wrist around, and um, this is my main, this is home base right here, is the American grip. So, question is, and it's one that I get asked a lot, is what grip do you use? What's your favorite grip? Is it German? Is it French? Is it American? Fact of the matter is, I use all three. My hands are a lot like the transmission in a car. And I'm constantly changing gears while I'm playing, and it really just kind of depends on what it is that I'm doing. So let's um, show you a couple of clips of just me playing naturally, and I'll show you what I mean. So my hands are constantly changing while I'm playing. They're in one position if I'm grooving. They're in another position if I'm playing on the ride. Um, they morph into something else when I go to do any kind of fast licks on the toms. It's not always like this. And, um, and I don't think it should be. I think you should really get used to all three, you know, German, French, and American. Um, get used to all three of those because there are advantages to using all of them during regular play. Because the American grip is sort of a sort of an optimal 
wrist movement type of grip. Um, I find that I use that when I need any kind of strength or power when I'm grooving, or also if I'm playing on the ride. Now the way I hold the stick, um, you know, the only thing that really changes is the position of my palm and where it's facing. The grip itself stays exactly the same. So, you know, if I'm playing like that, you know what I mean, like at my wrist sort of pointing downwards, if I go over to the ride, it's the exact same thing, but I'm kind of hitting at it this way now. Um, but the grip itself, like I said, exactly the same. When I go to play anything that requires any sort of speed or power on the toms, then I'll revert to more of a French thing. I got my thumbs over top, my palms come a little bit closer together, you know, and I use that sort of approach to it. Um, I just found that it's a lot more accurate than this thing, at least for me, right? There's, there's less of a chance of sticks hitting each other when they're like this. So, um, so when I was watching myself, I just noticed that whenever I go to do that, I change gears and that's what I do. I revert to uh, more of a French thing to get me around the toms. Another really cool thing that I noticed when I was watching myself playing is that the position of the stick changes in my hands depending on what it is I'm trying to do. And um, it's just a natural sort of instinctive thing that happens. So if I'm doing something really delicate or something, or if I want to play nice and quiet, um, if I'm on a ride, for instance, what will happen is the stick will kind of float out to my fingertips, and I'll do that kind of thing. So, you know, if I'm playing any type of jazz swing or whatever, that's sort of the approach that I take um, for that thing. And if I'm also doing some delicate stuff on the snare or on the toms or whatever, um, I end up choking up on the stick a little bit. So I'll go from here, and it'll just naturally kind of creep up like that. And I'm playing a little bit more from the middle of the stick. Butt ends are sticking out. And, you know, I'm, I'm reverting back to this whole American thing. And I can get really sort of nice and quiet and, and technical and very dynamic when I do that type of thing because I can utilize the wrist. And I'm, I'm also in a prime spot for accents just by snapping my wrist down. So, um, so yeah, I just, I just sort of instinctively end up choking up on the stick when I do delicate stuff like that. And then in an instant, when I need more power, the stick will just kind of creep back up and I end up holding it way back here at the butt end. And I'm back to that whole American thing. So when I really need a ton of power, I'm swinging it from way back here, using the same grip, swing the stick from way back here, and I get a ton of power. So, you know, switching from back and forth um, as far as the position of the stick, that happens in an instant. Like, it's just super easy to do. And it, it's, like I said, the stick just kind of floats to a different position in the hands when I need them to.
So, French grip is great for using the fingers if you want speed. Um, you know, thumbs are over top, palms facing in, and you can get that kind of thing happening. So when you're playing your tom fills and all that kind of stuff, French grip is great. German grip, palms down approach, that whole bouncing a tennis ball thing. Um, the German grip is a lot more about the wrist, at least the way I use it. Um, and it just allows you to get some really nice power out of that grip. So for accents on the snare, um, you know, when you're doing any kind of grooving, stuff like that, just allows you to stay really nice and relaxed and work almost 100% from the wrist. German grip is great for that. American grip, for me, is a great sort of home base starting point, you know, somewhat full-time grip because your hands are in a perfect position to go either way. So if you're starting from the American, it only takes that to go to French and that to German. So if you're starting with the American, you're just in a prime spot to go either way. So there it is, man. Hope that helped you out. Thanks for sticking it out. Now this was a long video, um, but it was packed full of information. If you stuck it out, you got some good ammo now. And uh, yeah, man. Give it a shot. Spend the next few months developing those. And, you know, hopefully it'll uh, amp up your plan. Don't forget to tell people where you learned this. Like, subscribe. See you next video.